Hi guys, my name's Damien Richardson and I'm running for the Northern Metropolitan Region in the Upper House uh, uh, for the Victorian Parliament this upcoming uh, election on November the 26th. I'm running for the Freedom Party of Victoria and I'm running on a platform where um, I want people to be able to take personal responsibility for themselves. I want to bring responsibility back to the forefront of the argument. I'm not going to say things like, um, I, I want sustainability and, and I want diversity and I want inclusion. Because I want to ask people that say those things all the time, what do those things actually mean? They've actually become meaningless slogans, the things you have to say to feel like, oh, I'm going to fit into this club and be an elected representative of parliament. Well, the reality is I want to run because I don't want to be a career politician and I want to run on a platform of truth and honesty. And what do we really need to talk about in this culture? And I think we need to talk about the system itself because the system to me seems to be the problem. And I know this because I've got three children and all of them will come to me at some point in time, particularly my son has recently come to me and, he's, and he showed me this video that they had to watch at school that was made by SBS. And what's on that video? Well, basically it's a group of... Uh, of, uh, it's, a, it's an acted piece, it's a scripted piece, and it's a group of Yobbo Australian cricket supporters end up on a bus admonishing this other guy who thinks he's an Australian supporter too, but he's unfortunately he's of Asian descent. And worse than that, he's in a wheelchair. But these Yobbo Australian cricketers, uh, cricket fans, pick on him because he's not allowed to be part of the Australian club. Now my son was telling me this story when on the day when I was actually in the city, when as part of the T20 game, between India and Pakistan, and the MCG, Australia's largest sporting stadium arena, was basically sold out. There's over 90,000 fans there, and Australia aren't the home team playing. So how racist are we really as a culture? Why do we need to keep propagating this myth of us being so racist, yet your eyes lie to you because you look around and you see a diversity in Australian culture that I certainly never saw when I was born? but yet I'm supposed to keep going around saying everyone's racist and if I don't, what, I'm in trouble of losing a job or do I know that I won't get that job? So even when we're protesting, Shane Patton is standing up and admonishing all us for being, you know, middle-aged men, basically, which wasn't even true because there were so many women in that protest movement, but it's post-truth. It doesn't matter about truth. You just have to say what the, um, what the uh, institutions need you to say so you continue to advance through them. So Shane Patton says this stuff, even though the whole time he's one of those middle-aged white men, just like Daniel Andrews is a middle-aged white man. But he'll be the first one to try and throw all the middle-aged white men under the bus. But it doesn't make any sense. It's incongruous. And why would we do this? Why would we do this when we have developed an amazing, amazing country, an extraordinary country that so many people from far flung corners of the world want to come to and call home? Is that that they want to call it home because they're so frightened they're going to be attacked if they hop on a bus and they're wearing green and gold? Or is that a lie? So who's telling this lie and why are we telling ourselves this lie? Why do we want to destroy the culture? And globalism wants to destroy the culture because globalism wants to destroy national identity. It wants to destroy everybody's national identity. It wants to destroy Australia's national identity. It wants to destroy New Zealand's national identity. It wants to destroy Canada's. It wants to destroy the United States, France, England, wherever. Eventually, it'll come for anybody else as well because it, it can't afford to have something that stands in its way. And it's the same with religion. It'll need to, to destroy anyone of traditional faith, anyone of traditional value because that makes you powerful. And that, makes, that gives you the ability to stand up to the state. And what I saw in the pandemic and what made me so proud is I saw hundreds of thousands of Australians that were willing to stand up and say no to being, being forced to take a medication that they didn't want to take. As they said, enough is enough. And that's why I'm standing for Parliament, because there comes a point where enough is enough. And it has, uh, it has corollary of effects because don't tell me this hasn't affected small business because small business wasn't allowed to operate, yet McDonald's is allowed to operate, and all these multinationals, KFC was allowed to operate. But wasn't this, this uh, um, a threat to our health? Wasn't this virus a threat to our health? So surely um, a small business selling fruit or a, a health store, selling health food bars, whatever else it is, would have been more important to stay open than uh, these multinational companies that are, are, are poisoning us. But no, that's not the case. Just like it wasn't the case that you couldn't celebrate Anzac Day, God forbid someone catch a virus, but on the same day they celebrate a football game and there's again 90,000 people collected at the MCG in no threat of a virus when they're watching Essendon and Collingwood play. But if we had have celebrated 
the uh, dawn service in the morning, oh God forbid that we might have killed some, one of our grandparents. And this is what they do. They weaponize, they weaponize morality against us, but it's not morality, it's not truth. And that's why it's about truth. And it's about people being able to take personal responsibility for themselves as we've always been able to do. And as we were taught to do when we were growing up in our families, eventually there comes a time when you have to stand up and take responsibility for yourself. So please, this November the 26th, vote for me. And so we can all begin to start to claim our own personal responsibility.